Hello, everybody. Welcome once again to B and D Live, the Dungeons and Dragons live stream, where a bunch of high school friends attempt to play Dungeons and Dragons remotely via the internet. With us, as always, although it's slightly messed up because I didn't do it right, we have Stephen as Frederick the Monk, Aaron as Lily the Fighter, Tim as Twizzard the Wizard, Chris should be here as Polias the Cleric soon, and I am Sean. You're ever faithful and humble DM, and this is B and D Live. That's much better. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, light up dice. It's going to be good. Let's see. Let's see what happened uh, last week, shall we? <clears throat> While standing outside the scribery in the good part of town, you spied a familiar green-haired person with a cart selling mostly toys. You confront who appears to be Rock Broccoli. Upon recognizing Plyce's pouch of serpent gold, you sort of uh, engage with him. Zone of Truth fizzles, but Fenric applies some physical truth force. And now caught in exchange for his livelihood, he agrees to take you to Ithian's Inc., a tattoo parlor where magical ink can be had. Lily and Swimmy peel off and go explore beaches, while Plyus gets inked up for a wisdom boost. Twizzard, Mr. Bones, and Fenric decide to busk for coins, first trying breakdancing, then acrobatics and magic. And then the final and best idea of flying Fenric way up high leaving him there with an immovable rod, and then having him seemingly fall to his death, only to stick the landing unharmed. Eventually, the Atan regroup, minus Finistel, at Swimmy's romantic beach for a sunset dinner of street cart food. And that is where we shall pick things up. It is still de Gaulle around 8 p.m. Uh, you are on the beach as the sun is setting. What would you like to do? Well, I guess after sunset, we should probably make our way back to our ship. I don't know if this kind of place is uh, safe at night. It was a little shady in the uh, daytime in terms of pickpockets. Yeah, probably best to sleep uh, in a big group on our boat. <laughs> Sounds good. Sleep in a big group on your boat. All in the same room? Yeah. It's like a pile. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> All right, so you guys uh, make your way back through the town along the beach. What do you What do you want to do? Oh, can we go along the beach? Oh yeah, we can go along the beach. Let's go along the beach. Uh, there's, a, here. there's a part of the land that uh, the sort of the rocks come down a little, so it's a bit of a. You've still got a little bit of residual, uh, but it's a little, little, uh, little hairy. Um, might need some extra light if you have it. Oh, well, I I can cast light. All right. What do you cast it on? And what color? I cast it on my really pretty green seashell. All right. And I hold it up like a lamp. All right. Excellent. The, uh, the light of your glowing seashell certainly helps. Um, and you make it around that sort of promontory... promontory uh, and you see the docks, you sort of come in from the side. Uh, give me a perception check. Anyone who wants to. Sure. Oh, <laughs> it's not Lily. <laughs> not one, but I have a couple to add to that. Well, you're really like close to the bright shell, so it's really throwing off your night vision. Yeah. I, and I'm looking at the ground. I don't want to trip. Yeah. Ooh, ooh, eight. You don't have any additions. I got 16. Ooh. 18 and 16. Uh, yeah, no, I mean... Oh, 8, eight flat. Oh, 8 flat. Okay. Uh, Twizzard, you notice as you're sort of coming around the bend there, um, 
that there is a um, there's a group of people uh, just sort of like over in the sand dunes, um, not quite where the dockyard is, but just like over to the side, just having some kind of like beach campfire type thing. All right, everybody, hold up. My warning beard just went off. So there's a group of people up there seem a little suspicious, not too sure about. Mm. Maybe they're fine, maybe they're not, but they're probably not. Oh, uh, those guys, they're, they're probably just having a clam bake or something. Oh, if we can get in on that. Uh, maybe. Okay, Swimmy, why don't you go ahead and find out for us? Uh, okay. Uh, all right, I'll go check it out. So he goes, checks it out. <clears throat> and you see some of the people like turn and look toward you. Uh oh. And he comes back. Oh uh, yeah, no, they're just they're just having dinner. Nothing to see there. Oh. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Guess we're not invited. Fine. All right. I read you loud and clear. No no dinner company for us. Oh, I like plans anyway. <laughs> You guys go a little further, uh, and you get back onto basically the, the sort of docks along the um, along the shore there. And by that, uh, as you get to your ship, the Bounty's Edge, uh, you see Jenkins sort of sitting at the end of the gangplank uh, on on ship, but sort of you know ready to like kick it off or defend if if any ne'er do wells came by. But he recognizes you guys, and he's like, "Evening." <laughs> you guys, uh, you go on board the ship. Oh, I want to show him my shell. Very nice. <laughs> <laughs> I go, I guess I go into my room and I find a, like a little shelf or something to put it on. All right. Yeah, there's probably like a nail or something sticking in the wood. You could like hang it on maybe too. All right. And yeah. if it's still glowing, it's like a little nightlight. That's true. Yeah, yeah, it would be. And you can also drape it with something that's too bright, or just end the spell. <laughs> uh, anything else you guys want to do before a long just, rest? Just gonna rummage a little bit in the galley for some snacks. Sure, sure, yeah. Uh, Nate and Jenkins have restocked, so um, anything that I'm was running about. low is now good to go again. Cool. Uh, a nightcap of rum, perhaps. A little bit, of, a little bit of rum. Is there some uh, some dried meats? There are plenty of dried meats to choose from. Not for a long. cap of dried meat. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, halflings do. <laughs> Halfling monk specific. All right. So I'll I'll make myself a little assortment of uh, meat and rum. All right, you do that. Oh, you and you just you sort of like eating it by yourself in the galley. Yep. All right. Chowing down before before bed. <laughs> All right. Yeah, you don't want bits of meat in your bunk. Yep. No. No. no crackers. No. All right. You uh, guys. Yeah. If we're, if we're heading to bed, I'm casting uh, animate the dead on Mr. Bones. Okay. Just so it's known. All right. Excellent. Easily done. Um, all right, you all have the benefits of a long rest. Uh, nice. You wake up the next day. It's a little overcast. Uh, not quite raining, but um, a little overcast. Nate and Jenkins uh, greet you. Uh, and uh, you can have breakfast there in the galley. Yes. So uh, we're all stocked up again there, uh, Henrik. We're uh, we're ready to go if you guys are. I don't know, I don't know what's the plan. Uh, I think we're gonna go over to this other island, um, on this map here, and we're gonna we're gonna go look for some uh, water glow metal. We we have a lead. All right. Is it? Uh, and, go ahead. Is it possible to to? I guess we'll just see when we get there if the if there's a port or anything there. Come yeah, on. so there's a port, but apparently, um, I'm told that the place we actually want to go, uh, is, uh, 
uh, we're visiting the water, Genesee, uh, and w I believe they're like 50 miles or so away from the from the main port. Um, but I guess I don't know too much more than that. Um, maybe should we run out see if we can find Swimmy and have him like point to the map where we should go, or alternately, I don't know what else. Uh, there, there's a little, there's a marking on the map. Oh, or we could read the map. Yeah, there's a, no, it's a, yeah. We could read, I see that. There's a, there's yeah, a, there's a marking, you're, you're, you're talking about, uh, you're talking about this place right here. Yeah, it's next to this blue area. Do you think we can... Oh, well, that would be, uh, that'd be the ocean there, Fenric. <laughs> oh. That's the key well, that should be easy. Well, I think you'll, you know, you're in luck, Finwick. We'll be inside of land the whole way. Excellent. I thought you'd like that. Yeah. All right. All right, so you guys <clears throat> push off, as it were. Um, um, probably at some point, uh, a Finnish still comes to, to the galley for breakfast. Uh, she is, in fact... Uh, on the ship, um, actually, give me another, another another perception check as she walks into the galley. Two out of four. No, wait, hang on, lucky, hang on. Uh, ha, not twenty. Whoa, oh, that man. was lucky. Yeah, no, Fenric. As she sort of reaches for a roll to butter, uh, you notice that on the um, on the back of her left hand, there's sort of a vivid blue with like a little bit of green mixed in uh, tattoo on the back of her hand going up her sleeve that you didn't notice before. Hey, Finn. Yes, Finrick. Tell me about that tat. Oh, well. A little tit for tat? <laughs> Perhaps. Um, and she sort of like pulls up her sleeve and you see it, it extends all the way up her arm basically. Um, Whoa. Yeah, well, I was um, I was thinking about the abilities that those tattoos could impart, and I uh, thought maybe maybe I'd treat myself. So I went back and, and spent the evening with Ithian, delightful man. Um, had quite the chat, and uh, and he gave me this. That's pretty badass. You, you spent the evening with him, and he gave you that. Did you pay for that? I did pay for it, Twizzard, and uh, with money. I'm sort of offended that you would imply otherwise. That's just the story I was just told. I'm just trying to get the all the details down. Just trying to make sure. Oh. Understandable. You have any uh, snide remarks for me, Pelias? Hi. <laughs> Didn't think so. Yeah, uh, Plyce, if you look over at Finistel during breakfast the next morning, you'll see that she has a aquamarine tattoo up her left arm, uh, also done by Ithian. Oh, nice. Aquamarine. That's a good color on you. Thank you. Thank you, Plyce. Oh, Finistel, remind me. Um, what god are you aligned with? It's not so much a god as a other planar entity, Fenric. Oh yeah, sorry. What was what was his name? We're almost at that level, Fenric. Almost. <laughs> Besides, why do you want to know so badly? Don't you well, trust me? Uh, we. What, uh, <clears throat> yes, Fenric. It, it's just it's just that um, it's just that I find you like really interesting, and I just sort of wish. You know, that we were comfortable enough with each other that we knew uh, uh, who we were uh, aligned with. Which gods do you bro. follow, Fenric? I don't remember. No, which. You don't remember which gods you follow? <laughs> I'm just kidding, of course. Um, so I am aligned with uh, the. Uh, the whatchamacallit? Um, That's a type of candy bar. It's a good one. It's crispy and chewy. Have you been uh, was there a sweet shop in town that I missed? I uh, I would be sad to have missed a sweet shop. That would. So the reason that um, it, you know, it's kind of complicated for me is that it's the triad, right? So it's not just the one god, you know. It's like the triad. Danny's mafia. Interesting. 
All right then. You know, it's it's a uh, it's a uh, it, it's it's uh, what should we call it? Uh, Tear and uh, Torm. Oh. And uh, the other one. Oh, all right. Let's Don't just meter. say that uh, my patron has a vested interest in helping you folks on your quest. Sweet. Exactly. I think so, too. All right. Well, uh, so... Should, should we go? Yeah, yeah. All right, you guys. You guys set sail for uh, what? According, according to your map, will be a uh, water genesee, genesee, water genesee enclave or conclave of some kind. A grouping, which is which is odd. Um, in all of your travels, you've uh, actually Finric, Give me. And 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 no, actually, yeah, Fenric, give me a uh, give me a history check, and Plyus, you could do, or Arcana, you have your either of your choice. Okay, not great. I mean, I couldn't even remember like what gods I'm aligned with. So, uh, <laughs> so a three. Yeah. Yeah, I took a I took a long fall yesterday. You, and... <laughs> you did. That's true. <laughs> what um, what was it, Arcana or what? Or history, your choice. Um, I'll go with history, and that is uh, four. Yeah, maybe you guys don't know that it's odd. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's completely normal. It's fine. Oh, it's fine. It's good. It's, you know, I've never seen one of these before, but you know, I gotta say, it's exactly what I would expect. <laughs> um. All right. So yeah. So you guys, you guys push off. Uh, you're basically, uh, you're effectively in inland waters, really, because the, uh, you know, the three islands sort of um, in encompass this whole area. Um, but it's going to basically, it's going to basically take the whole day to sail uh, up, up from, from the, from the island you're on, up to Tomek and then along the coast. Um, but it's a it's a it's a nice day, and um, well, actually, let's let's roll a d20 because it was overcast this morning. Let's go ahead and someone roll a d20 for me. Uh, got it. Uh, just a straight roll. Straight d20 for me, please. Nineteen. Nineteen. That's a good roll. Well, really? we don't know if that's a good roll. I think it's a good roll. Uh, it is actually a good roll. Um, the wind is perfect it's going exactly uh the direction you want so you can put sort of one sail out to the side the other sail out to the other side and you're just like catching all the wind uh nice. so you're actually going to make it there um you're going to make it there a little before sundown call it maybe 6 p.m while we're on uh, um floating there can i uh go to my bunk and learn my new spell absolutely Yes, you have paid the cost for the uh, paper, the parchment, and the inks, and you uh, practice copying it over a few times. Practice the the incantation. Uh, I, assuming it has verbal components. There you go. Yep. Good question. Does it? Uh, yeah. No. You you would be able to to uh, to do that during the trip. Awesome. It's only verbal. It is verbal. Yes. All right. So yeah, during during the during the trip, Twizzard is nowhere to be found, but some mutterings can be heard from below deck. Mm -hmm. Mutter, mutter, mutter. Sounds about right. Yeah. So I can't equip that till the next long rest, right? Um. Uh, yeah, no, probably not. That's fine. We get there at nighttime. Probably not long till the long rest. Yeah, so as you, uh, Lily, are you up in the crow's nest? Oh, probably. All right. Um, as you, uh, as you get closer, give me a perception check, Lily. 
Uh, twelve. Uh, there is the, the sort of unbroken coastline uh, does have uh, a bit of a small bay uh, and you can see from up in the crow's nest uh, a few small sort of huts. Um, definitely not fancy, uh, but it does appear to be inhabited. Uh, so, you, so you see that. And you could relay right. that to Nate if you wanted. Yeah, I'll probably shout that down to Nate. All right, he corrects course a little. Uh, and you guys head in. It's basically golden hour. Um, and you see a few folks, um, various colored hair, all uh, sort of blue-tinged skin. Uh, some gathering at the shore to like sort of point at the ship. I don't, uh, I don't think we'll have the depth to take her all the way in, of course, but uh, I could anchor here. And you folks could take one of the dinghies in. Who are you calling a dinghy? A dinghy. <laughs> to the dinghy. All right. So Nate and Jenkins weigh anchor, drop anchor, drop anchor, and um, and you folks get into one of the dinghies. Can we all fit in one dinghy? No, sure, probably okay. not. Actually, you'd either need to take two trips or take both dinghies. Which would you prefer? Uh. Both dinghies. It's a race. Well, I feel like it would not be smart to bring both, but at the same time, we want to be able to make a fast retreat. I was going to say, yeah, if we bring one and something happens to it, then we're really out of luck. Whereas if we bring two, we're in no worse, we're in no, no worse spot, I think, bringing two. Well, certainly Jenkins and I will be okay. We'll have the large ship. Yeah. Big dinghy. It's up to you, How folks. much does it cost to replace a dinghy? Oh, I don't know. Uh, probably not even a hundred gold. Less than that. I don't have any money anymore. I can't buy a dinghy. <laughs> you can't even buy a dinghy. Nope. Well, I mean, someone could polymorph into a large winged creature and fly some people over. I'm not using my own... My only level four spell slot to fly you down. Hmm. <laughs> well, hey, how about this? Uh, can we have uh, can we have Nate and maybe uh, uh, in one of the dinghies, and then like once he drops us off, he brings one of the dinghies back to the main boat. Ah, Jenkins, you you could row one of them over there. I or, or, or Jenkins. All right, so Jenkins in one. Um, I don't know, does it matter? What do you guys want to do? Let's just bring the big boat closer to shore. No, it's too shallow. <laughs> That's what they just said. Says who? Admiral? Says the people who know boats well. I assume Twizzard makes Mr. Bones row. <laughs> I was just I was gonna say that earlier. Yeah. That or an unseen servant. I'm not using another spell slot when Bones can row. No, unseen servant is a ritual. You can just take ten minutes to do it. What? Ten minutes will be on shore. <laughs> it's just time for Mr. Bones to start pulling his weight around here. Which boat is Lily in? Lily's in the one with Jenkins and Pelias. Alright, I'm gonna cast Mage Hand and see if I can give her a little push. Maybe tip, tip her over to the water. Alright. Her personally or the dinghy? Just her. <laughs> uh, sure, give me, a, give me an athletics check. <laughs> you are asking a. Nat 20. He didn't ask you for anything. No, I'm the one who needs the athletics check. Oh, well, you, you can do athletics athletic. or acrobatics, your choice, but Twizzard would have well, to Well, I got a natural 20, so it doesn't matter what I add to it. What? Wait, who was the check for? <laughs> Me. I'm basically treating it as an opposed grapple, uh, so you would do an so athletics check. my athletics check. would be plus four, and my acrobatics would be plus six. You so 24 or 26, whichever one you hand, want to use. Not your athletic no. reflexes, my athletic hand. It would be both, Twizzard. But it sounds like you're not budging her. Sorry. Right, so do over. He said do over because we didn't. We weren't rolling for the right nope, things anyway. Nope. Nope. I did not. <laughs> Fine. All right. Well, no one knows I did anything anyway, so I'll just uh, keep her on bones. Come on. All right, you guys. Uh, are it you? It feels like there's like a gnat or something. All right. Let's do it. Let's do a race here. Uh, Jenkins versus Mr. Bones. Uh, give me a strength check. Check for Mr. Bones. 
We got a 19 over here. Mr. Bones is 11. I think they also have one less person, though, in their defense. But, yeah, they pull ahead. Um, oh, I cast Gust. Yeah, but uh, Mr. <laughs> Bones, Mr. Bones doesn't really have much weight. That's true. It's true. Not, he's and, but Lily's Bones. probably smaller than... Well, no, Fenric and uh, Mr. Twizzard, but Mr. Twizzard's a very beefy dude. I cast Gust and push our boat with Mage Hand. All right, it's a tie. It's a tie. <laughs> you you both <laughs> grind up onto the rocks of the beach at the same time. Uh, and there are a few uh, blue-skinned folks sort of looking at you uh, in an interested manner. Um, and as you sort of get out of the ship and get onto land, a Jenkins, uh, Jenkins says to Plyus, should I take her back? Um, yeah, sure. All right. Uh, send a signal if you need us to come get you fast. All right. Digigation? Yes. Showers of arcs. If you see a building on fire, that's the symbol. <laughs> Um, but yeah, no, so a uh, rather tall, maybe maybe seven foot or so, uh, blue skin, um, surprisingly light hair, um, comes down and he's like, Welcome, I am Asnando. <gasps> Asnando? Yeah. I am Finric. <laughs> Welcome, Finric. Welcome to our, to our village. Thank you. And this is the Atam. Uh, damn. What brings you here? We are in search of water glow metal. Oh. Ah, the sacred metal. Yes. We uh we are being pursued uh and scried on by um evil beings. By an evil being. And we are we are in search of water glow metal to help us dispense uh, his magic. Oh, I see. Interesting. Well, there are many things to discuss. Please, please, come. You must have traveled far. Let us let us dine tonight. We will we will host you at our village. Um, I think Lily would like to beachcomb. I think she's okay. very interested in finding some more pretty shells or something like that. Things that she doesn't have to spend money on, but are still pretty. All right. All right. Lily, Lily is going to go off beachcombing. Um, will the rest of you follow Asnando up into the village? I will follow for dinner. I can eat. Yeah, it's probably like, you know, it's not quite six, but you could, you could eat. You could eat. Um... Getting out some. Uh, I, I push uh, push out my sending stone. Does anyone get the feeling that this meal is free? Is anyone picking up on that, or are we being brought to a, like a restaurant? I feel like it's probably free, and it's like you know, like plants and shit. I think they're either gonna feed us or eat us. Ooh, okay, so right. maybe they'll feed you to eat you. Yeah, <laughs> could be a winner. Could be a could be a twofer. Either way, um, I'm in. Uh, are you gonna just leave the? boat there? Is Mr. Bones going to hold it? Are you going to pull it up on the beach? What are you going to do? You can just pull it up on the beach a little. Uh, Mr. Bones, pull those boats up and then come with us. Just the one. And Lily will probably be close enough to, to the boats to keep her eye on them. I don't think she's planning on going too far beachcombing. You know, okay. okay. Um, there, Yeah, there are some very curious uh, water genocide sort of you sort of catch them out of your peripheral uh, Lily as you're as you're combing the beach, um, and a few are walking with your group. Um, there's a few more where, where Lily is. Oh, I see you. Uh, they're not really, uh, you know, they're maybe like 20 feet away. They're sort of like, you get the idea that they're sort of watching you, Lily, but not like, they're curious, mostly, is the feeling you get. Um, oh, I'm sure Lily is curious too because this is, I don't know, would this be her first time seeing creatures with bluish tinted skin? Um, yes, I think so. Um, um, I think that is a safe, 
safe assumption. Uh, they sort of look like. See if I can. I'm imagining draining. Draining. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Squid people. Well, whatever. My internet's been terrible. All right. Anyway, yeah, they're. Um, I don't think she would have met one before. Um, you folks following as Nando, uh, he sort of leads there. You, you see some sort of smaller huts, sort of thatched roof. Um, simple construction, but well made. Um, the village um, of what it is, maybe, I don't know, say 10 or so huts, and then sort of one larger one, which is where Asnando seems to be leading you. Uh, everything's very neat, tidy. Um, um, and you uh, you enter the sort of main building. Uh, he gestures to some uh, tables set up there. And uh, and you sit down. You sit down. All right. Nice place. Your, your other friend, will, will she be joining us? Uh, I'm afraid she may have to just join us after the meal. Um, she is uh, a free bit of a free spirit. Hmm. I see. We have many free spirits here in our village as well. Ah, I'll take one. And your um, your friend with no skin. Is he all right? Sure. Gesturing towards Mr. Bones. Not, yeah, not for a while. He's just tall. Hmm. I see. He grew spurt. He grew out of it. Yeah. Yeah. He had skin when he was younger. <laughs> grew so fast it fell off. Just popped right off. A couple of the a couple of the yeah. water genocide come and bring uh, <laughs> cups of. Uh, it was basically like some kind of citrus flavored water. Um, very cool and refreshing. Tastes like fresh spring water type of thing. Uh, and uh, uh, fruits uh, sort of cut into different shapes. Uh, there might be like a melon type thing in the shape of a, of a turtle and a sort of more of a pineapple-y flavored uh, fruit that's sort of cut into a, like a, a more, more of a fish shape. You see a dolphin and a different type of melon. It's like, a, it's like some, some light appetizer, but in, you know, fruits type of thing. So these guys are water people? Is it rude to drink water in front of them? Give me a history check, Twizzard. Maybe you'll do better than history or arcana. Oh, I've got... I can do both of those. <laughs> no, I can't. Well, well, I don't know why I'm bothering to check. Arcana, seven plus one is eight. <laughs> yeah, no, you don't think it's... No, I mean, clearly they're drinking it too, so... And they served it to us. And they served it to you. Unless it was a trick. Yes. My brother! Drink our water! You drank my brother! Um, you, you are, uh, you are quite the host. No, oh, well, we don't get many visitors this way. Mm. The main trade of Tulu of sugar and rare metals, um, doesn't, doesn't entice us very much. Hmm. Well, Although, it's a lovely place. I would have thought people would would come just for the, for the view. We get seekers of truth. Sometimes on journeys to find themselves. Hmm. We could assist you if you were so inclined, Finric. I assume you've all given names, probably. By this point. Yeah. Just to see. Uh. Tell 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 us more. Well, there are certain methods that you could partake in to open yourselves to the astral plane and explore the worlds that exist. God. I could lead you in one such meditation if you were inclined to do so. I think... I'm inclined. Yeah, I'll take this. I've been wanting to get to the astral plane for a while now. Yeah. yeah. 
I hear it's beautiful. Get to the astral plane, please. I heard it's really nice this time of the year. Who said that? No. I'm gonna. I was gonna say I'm gonna sending stone Lily. Um, hey Lily, I don't know if you're uh, interested, but we might do a meditation session to uh, to journey to the astral plane. Uh, if you wanna, if you, if you wanna join. Uh. No, meditation kind of sounds boring. Okay. Think so. Uh huh. Ooh, shiny. <laughs> uh. Sorry, I just had a little momentary meditation of myself. Mm. Uh, 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 I, I think, yeah, that sounds uh, that sounds very enticing. Uh, how? Let's do it. Let's do it. All right, all right. Well, let's finish our meal first. Yes. Give the body sustenance before we feed the mind. That's right. And then the second course is brought, and it's uh, a lot of fresh seafood. Um, and uh and this sort of it's like a it's like a roll it's like not not a crescent roll but like that sort of pastry it's got a little bit of a nutty taste to it um, it's pretty good yeah as they uh, as you're eating he turns back to you and he says you mentioned when you got here that you are on a quest for as you call it the water glow metal it is true that we have been known to craft arcane items from such metal. We have um, not had as much access to it recently, um, but we do have a bit. And of course, we are always looking for more. If you were to find some on your adventures, you would be pay handsomely for it from our village's funds. Do you know where the water glow metal that you've come across in the past, do you know how, where it's come from? We have seen visions on some of our quests to the astral plane of an island that split from its proper home in many ages past we feel it is far to the west of here and the metal that we have received over the years has come from traders who have had access to that island or to pieces of it that have road the currents of the ocean so you get pieces of metal from splitsville and then you imbue it so it is amenable to having arcane energy infused within it mm. you mentioned a need for obfuscating your presence to divination magic, I presume. Yes, that's correct. We may be able to fashion such an amulet, but unfortunately with the amount we have, we could probably only do one. I don't know if that would serve your purpose. I think so, guys. If it twizzards the Twizzard seems to be the guy, right? Well, yeah, but couldn't, couldn't you just uh, pick one of us then? Well, I, I could he? Because doesn't he need to have our blood or something like that? Oh, so you think he's crying because he has his blood? I don't know. Well, it certainly couldn't hurt to, to have something for sure. Mm. Well, I guess here's the next question. What? So what uh, would something like that cost? to have that done. To craft an amulet such as that? Yeah. What would you want for, for that? Um, let us... Let us go on our trip tonight as brothers and we shall determine 
such mundane issues as cost in the morning. Yes. Bro party. No girls. Why can't I zoom in on this? Except Fennestal. Oh, right. Forgot to hear. I'm, I'm right here, Twizzard. Oh. <laughs> I know I don't talk that much, but it's just my reticent nature. Uh, you, you, I guess you can come with the bro party. Bro plus party. Um, so, Lily, it is getting dark. What is your move? Um, You're lost. I'm not lost. I'm by the dinghies. I didn't well, one dinghy. Back. Jenkins took the other dinghy oh. up back to the ship. Uh, Lily is contemplating taking the dinghy and going back to the boat, but she also <laughs> is... You're gonna get lost. <laughs> What? I can see the boat. You give me a drift yeah, they, they, Jenkins has put a, a riding lantern up on one of the masts, so you can see it. You don't think that Lily would be able to get back to the boat? Maybe. Well, I think that Lily is considering it, but she's also considering having to, uh, to row by herself, and that is not appeasing to her. So I think she's going to uh, head towards the huts. All right. Um, as you do so, one of the uh, Genesee come up to you and says, Oh, um, right this way, please. Your friends are gathered in the main uh, dwelling of our people. Um, they're going to be doing some meditation, I think. Do you have something cooler that we can do? There's nothing cooler. Like, do you guys like do music or dance? Or, uh, like, give, me a give me a persuasion check. Oh, I was not persuasive at all. That's a natural one, and I think I only have plus one persuasion. Perhaps it would be best if you joined your friends. We wouldn't want oh, actually, you to... I have plus four, but it's still only like five. We wouldn't want you to be separated. The... But I don't have to meditate, do I? No, no, I do not think that Asmondo would require it, but the surrounding jungle is... Not a hundred percent safe at night. You may want to be with your friends. All right. Okay. If you don't mind showing me the way, I'd appreciate that. Thank you. All right. They lead you through um, just as sort of most of the dishes are being cleared away, I guess, because they were sort of to eat. Right? Um, as Nando sort of notices you enter and he's like, ah, yes, would you, we could have something prepared for you. We were about to do a, a group journey together, if you're interested. Um, I guess I'll just hang out in the kitchen and and uh, eat some leftovers. That's fine. Yes, Sonara, please, please get Lily something to eat. So, sort of one of them takes you aside uh, as you guys sort of go and sit in a circle. Bones. Mr. Bones sits down, although he's probably not going to go on the journey. Lily is off to the side somewhere. Boom. Plies his backpack is too heavy. Not too heavy. There we go. Looks pretty good there. Um, all right. All right. Hold on one second while I refresh my memory. All right, so you guys, uh, as Mundo bids you close your eyes uh, and sort of you all hold hands. Did he ask us to do that, or we just did that naturally? What's that? Did he ask us to hold hands, or did he we just asks do that? you to hold hands? Okay. Uh, what am I holding hands with? You're holding Mr. hands Bones. with uh, Finistel and Phileas. Oh, all right. All right. That's fine. Oh wait, no, I'm sorry, Mr. Bones and Finistel. Fenric yeah, is holding hands. Yeah, yeah, all right. Look at me. All right. Yeah. Does it work connected through Mr. Bones? <laughs> Let's find out. <laughs> um. So yeah, no, so you sort of close your eyes, 
Um, and you feel your consciousness sort of lift itself out of your body. But just, just as that starts to happen, you're whoom, uh, sent to, uh, you, you sort of can see again, um, and your, your hands are translucent, and you are floating in sort of an endless, um, uh, pinkish purplish void. Uh, you can see far away large chunks of land uh, slowly spinning as they move through. Um, far off in the distance you see what looks like a giant beast of some kind undulating uh, through the ether that surrounds you. Um, there are uh, once in a while sparkly lights that appear uh, every now and then. You are still roughly uh, in a circle, although you're no longer holding hands. You're sort of just drifting in a clump. And as Nanda's eyes open wide, um, and you see that they are all, uh, they are pupilless and uh, of a dark, dark color. And he says, welcome to the astral plane. Here you can see what you need to see. And you can move just by thinking. Explore, but don't go too far from me. Not that distance has real meaning here. Uh, yeah, this is weird. Lily, <laughs> you see, sort of, they, they all like slump over. <laughs> um, and, uh, and Sonara, who is with you, she sort of just like, she's like, Ah, the master has taken them. Lily is tempted to start like braiding their hair. <laughs> there it is. Mr. Twizzard's long beard. What? what? Is Bones floating around too? Uh, he. Oh man, um, <laughs> he is. He is there. He is translucent. Uh, Probably. It is hard to read his um, demeanor, as it always is, though. Oh, um, um, well, come play with me. Uh, yeah, no, he he he, he sort of he sort of grabs onto your ankle. All right, I'm gonna take his two hands, and we're gonna go spin around. <laughs> All right. Yeah. No. You. Uh, you can sort of spin around. Um, everybody, give me a perception check. Everyone but Lily, right? Everyone but Lily. Yeah. Sorry, Lily. You're probably just eating some some delicious food, some Ten. delicious island fare. There's some you kind never... of fish that was wrapped in leaves and baked. You like fish? <laughs> yeah. Thirteen. Eleven. Right. What'd you get, Fenric? Uh, ten. Ten. Um, yeah, I mean, you're sort of in a this sort of grayish, pinkish, purplish void. Um, um, you are... You're basically astral projected uh, into uh, this area. Um, actually... Uh, you can all give me a Arcana check as well. Sixteen. Twenty-five. Not twenty. Oh my gosh. All right. Uh, so yeah, Fenric, you would know this as... It is what he described. This is the, the astral plane. Uh, Twizzard and Polias, you know that this is... Another plane of existence that is sort of in between, as much as planes of existence can be in between the material plane um, and some of the other areas that you've heard of. Um, uh, but it is, uh, it can be a very dangerous place, it can be a very beautiful place. Um, as you look around, you also sort of notice a. Um, a silver cord stretching from each one of you uh, that goes about uh, 10, 10 feet or so and then sort of 
disappears into nothingness. Uh, mm -hmm. But you sort of get the idea that that is your connection back to your physical body. Um, you, um, yeah, no, it's uh, uh, the uh, when you first came through, you sort of saw uh, as you felt your body's being pulled out. You sort of saw this silvery uh, light that you passed through. Um, and um, Twizzard and Plyus, you notice there are around two of these other uh, sort of pools or portals. Um, you also um, uh, see these sort of, again, these sort of large uh, land masses. Um, it's hard to, it's really hard to gauge distance. Um, and, uh, when you look at Asmondo, he's sort of just like, totally just like vibing and like, you know, rotating around, um, in this area. Um, yeah. Um, Twizzard and Polis would also actually feel that your, uh, magic, uh, you can feel the arcane energy in your blood. It's like you're more attuned to your magic than normal. Mm. Uh, Finner, what were you gonna say? I was gonna say, um, and I can I can move. And do I feel any tension from the thread? No, no, you don't. No, and you, in fact, you just need to think a direction, and you you sort of get the feeling that you're going there. Although again, it's hard to judge distance. You can sort of judge distance from each other as you're in this void. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. All right, I cast the most epic prestidigitation ever, or I attempt to. Okay, what do you want it to do? It's just gonna shoot sparkly beams out of my fingers as I spin around. All right. Yeah. No, it's a uh, it's a sight to behold. It's uh. It's, oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's it's really good. Can I uh? Can I bath in my familiar? Um, yes. Yes, you can. Yeah. Yeah, you and then can. let's, uh, let's go exploring in the familiar's eyes. Ooh. Headed to some familiar territory. No. Or unfamiliar. Oh. Um, it's, it's, it, I mean... You are you are now sort of seeing your translucent body, um, those of your friends, uh, everything through your familiar's eyes. Um, so it's like sort of like trippy on top of trippy. Um, mm -hmm. Real out of body. Yeah, yeah, like wow. doubly out of body. And you can you can use your wings. You can fly. You can you can nice. do things. Uh, it's pretty crazy. Yeah, let's uh, let's flap a bit. <laughs> All right, yeah, you flap around. Cool. Let's uh, let's go over to that like uh, amorphous uh, undulating thing we saw. Uh, one of the pools? Uh, no, there was like a being or something. There was like a... oh, uh, sure. You can still catch a bit of a glimpse of it. Uh, and you it sort of moving? direct. Are you directing the familiar or directing yourself? The familiar. Okay, um, it sort of takes off from you. Um, um, give me a perception check as you sort of chase after this receding shadow. Oh man, another nat 20. Oh. All right. Um, you get the idea that this is some sort of astral whale for lack of a better word um it is um it is just swimming around in this really odd place i feel like this is very familiar and maybe i should have brought a towel
No. I got nothing. No. Are we gonna? Are we gonna need a bigger boat? Towel. Are we gonna need a bigger boat? No. No. Number forty-two. Getting more confused. The answer. Oh. Oh. I thought you you made the forty-two reference before, and. I mean, I'm familiar with forty-two. Answer to life, the universe, and everything. Ugh, so this is a pretty far out place. Yeah. All right, so we got some portals that look like they're sitting stationary there. And then there's some flying whales and some land masses in front of the portals, right? Uh, everything's sort of like, just like around you. Like there's no sense of gravity here. All right, so I'm going to ask, the, who's the guy that, that brought us here? What's his name? Asnando. Asnando. Hey, Asnando, have you ever gone through those portals or gone up to them? Um, not... It's not advised to travel to yet another realm when you're projected here in the astral plane. Mm. You could be severed from your body. Huh. I don't recommend it. Where do, do you know where those portals go? And uh, he looks around and he, he um, points to an orange one and he's like, very beautiful area, home of the gods. Uh, okay. And he's sort of, the other one that's near you is uh, is sort of a vibrant ruby red and he's like, that one is home to the opposite of the gods. That is a portal to the nine hells. You gotta avoid that one. I push Twizzard into the portal of the nine hells. <laughs> <laughs> um, You've been waiting all year for that. <laughs> it's it's all, all led up to this. I saw his chance. He's going for it. It's all led up to this. Oh, save me. Okay, uh, no, I kid. Um, don't, don't do that. Don't do that. Uh, you know you want to. No. Um, <laughs> All you have to do is think it. Yeah. That's true. Uh, Asnanda, what, what do you do when you come up to the astral plane? I let my body feel free and he sort of like does a cartwheel and like spins around I let my mind wander and open it to the possibilities that are endless okay I do that <laughs> <laughs> not the cartwheels and stuff just the sort of All sort right. of becoming meditative and Trying to open yeah. my mind as best I'm able. Give me a give me a wisdom check. Just a, just a, a roll d20 and add your wisdom modifier. Got it. Sorry, what was it? Oh, sorry, ten. Oh. Um. I mean, you kind of feel open and receptive. You're sort of just like, it's like yeah. when you first started at the Cobalt Soul, and some of the masters were teaching you different meditation techniques and how to sort of open your key up um, and, and sort of feel the key of others, mm -hmm. you were a little like, what is this nonsense, right? Um, and that's kind of where you are right now. You, you feel like there is something there, but you're not quite, not quite connecting to it. Hmm. All right, well, I'm just gonna keep trying. Um, all right. Twizzard replies anything you're doing? 
Uh, I'm going to ask uh, Anabolic if, um, so we've got this, we know this guy who, who's randomly shown up in different places, or no, no, we, uh, I'm not going to go for that one. So we killed him, or we tried to kill him, and he disappeared and went to another plane. Is this the sort of place he would have gone to? Would it be this exact place he went? If someone were to go to another plane? Oh. Yeah, many arcane users can travel between the planes. This is certainly one that he may have come to. But there are many others he could have been in? Yes, many, many others. Like two others? Three? There are many huh? portals that can be found if you want to. Like four? You could travel through them, and your body would probably follow, but without a way to return to our plane, you would be stranded. How does one learn how to do this on their own, to travel to the astro planes? Very, very interesting question, Plyus. Many, many long years of study and devotion to understanding how our bodies are linked to the whole realm of existence. Does everybody who goes to the planes talk like that? <laughs> talk like what? <laughs> uh, purposefully. Yes. Purposefully, there you go. Can you teach us to do this before we have to go home? In the astral plane, Time passes differently than our normal prime material plane. If I were to teach you here, it would take many years, but mere moments would pass in your corporeal body. So we would just spend a bunch of years here and learn, and then we'd go back and it'd be a couple minutes later? I conjure up a floating school desk and sit in. <laughs> All right, it is a beautiful, like, it's exactly what you wanted. Like, it's got really fine details. It looks like it's a really nice wood, nice metals. Uh, it's really, it's really a nice looking desk. Nice. Let's get to it. He sort of looks at you. You want to learn now? I mean, do we have to eat out here? Do we need to like get provisions or something? Or no, no, none of that. Not while you're here. Cool. Yeah, let's do it. Let's find out. Let's let's learn it. He sort of floats over to Twizzard's head. He puts his hand on your forehead, and <gasps> roll a uh, wisdom save for me, Twizzard. Oh, oh look boy. at that. <laughs> here we go, let's be, I put my hand over here and then it goes on it. Yep, there it is. Uh, <laughs> 15. Okay, uh, you you feel like like yeah, it's just like it's like it's like just this this like wind, this mental wind of storm. Your 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 brain is being tossed like a leaf. Uh, you get the feeling that maybe if you studied and proceeded uh, to level up for many more levels, uh, you could possibly begin to understand what he is imparting to you. Um, you will take, uh, roll a d10. What does that look like? <laughs> is that the this thing to do? Yeah, it's the thing to do. Four. Uh, you take four psychic damage. Oh my goodness! <laughs> and he sort of he takes his hand away from your head, and he looks at your like pained and wide eyes, and he's like, "You're not ready." Pelias, your turn. And he sort of turns toward you, and he reaches out his hand. Do you let him touch you? Yeah, let's do it. I'm ready. <laughs> and again, you you sort of uh, you you see. Uh, you see the symbol of Mistra flash before your eyes as it like 
wraps all around your mind and you're just like you feel your sort of head like shattered as you see these arcane symbols and this whirlwind sort of takes all the pieces of your brain and spins it around and around and then smashes back together as he takes his hand away and you also roll a d10 and take damage this is definitely a spell that is above your current levels d10 and sort of turns toward Finric. I got Finric. a nat one. All right, well, that's good in this case. Nice. You weathered mm -hmm. it better, so you take one psychic damage. Is that different from a regular hit point? Nope. It's just yeah. if you were, like, immune to psychic or something. Oh, I don't okay. think elves are, though, or resistant or anything. So. No, I'm against being charmed, though. We'll okay. see about that. He like sort of it. turns toward Finric. Finric, would you like to try? Yes, I've been meditating really hard, uh, so I, I, I think uh, probably this will go well. What's that? <laughs> yeah, this will go well. <laughs> he touches you, and, and again, like, um, actually, you do connect to his key, um, uh, and you detect that he is uh, resistant to cold and psychic damage. Uh, but you also have a similar experience, and roll a d10 to see how much damage you take. Five. And with that, he turns toward Finistel. Your turn, if you'd like. And she's like, she sort of looks around at you guys, and, and she's like... You good? Mm. Fine. And... <laughs> boom, boom. And uh, what she sees is... Her uh, but she ends up taking six damage, so she's a bit shaken afterwards. I think I may have had enough. Mm. Are we going anywhere else while we're here? <laughs> As Nando sort of looks around and he's like, Have you received the answers you're looking for? Um, I'm not sure I know how to. It will come with time. Question. It will come. Perhaps someday you will return to the astral plane. And with that, you sort of feel this tug on each of your bodies as one by one. And you wake up and you're still sort of sitting in the circle, although your bodies are sort of slumped over and you get up. Um, and Lily, uh, they have uh, basically been slumped over for two hours. Wow, that's actually pretty long. Oh wait, I'm sorry. No, it's the opposite. You guys felt like you were there. Yeah, no, I'm no, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Opposite, opposite, opposite. Yeah, you said it would be moments. Yes. Years yes. would be moments. Yeah. yeah. You you feel like you've barely started to eat when they sort of like get back up. That's what I meant to say. Just pretend I said it from the start. So like, were you guys gonna meditate or something? Just walks over. Just did. Change, changed my mind. Yeah, it was pretty good. Uh, it looked like you guys just kind of like blinked. A long blink. Finistel has like a drip of blood coming from her nose. Uh, Finistel. Oh, oh. <laughs> is it red? It is red, yes. You've seen her bleed before. I never, never looked to see what color it was. <laughs> it was something weird. She bleeds like the rest of us. Hmm. She uh, does have party, though. I feel like if you wanted us to craft an amulet of protection from divinity, we could do so for a donation of 500 gold. Hmm. What about instead of gold, something maybe you could use a little, uh, something you could find a little more useful? Like a muff muffin. Yeah. <laughs> a muffin. Uh, a muffin. Uh, a, a spinny wooden helicopter. A jar of honey or a shiny button. I have the worst crap in my inventory here. <laughs> I mean, the muffins are magical. Like that could be worth a trade. Hmm. Yeah, but. The muffins he's talking about are. Just... <laughs> <That's not you. laughs> 
some of these magical muffins. Would that knock a bit off the price there? <laughs> you might be stale. You could go eat them in the astral plane all by yourself. Are bro. they magical? If he looked at them with, uh, if he looked at them with detect magic, would he detect magic? They are so magical. They don't show up with detect magic. <laughs> Wow. Oh, because he put his detect mag or his aurora changer on it. <laughs> you can you can make him look. That's interesting. You could problem. try to trick him. The, the dude just took us to the astral plane. You're gonna try to trick him with some fake muffins? <laughs> <laughs> That's Mr. Twizzard. I'm trying to get the price down. <laughs> hey, um, hey, Fenestal. Yes, Fenric. Uh. Your, your, your benefactor's pretty well, uh, pretty, uh, you know, well actually, uh, uh, you know, has some, has some coin, right? Um, actually, he has no need of coin. Great, so he can use the what he has and to help us. I don't think that's how it works, Finnick. I'm sorry. I would help us if I could, but I think... This is one way I, I could perhaps uh, pay half of it. Although I would also want to be the one who would wear it then. Well, Lily is secretly sending stoning Agnes. Okay. And she's telling Agnes, Finistral said it's a he. Mm, all right. And Agnes is like, good work, Lily. <laughs> <laughs> good luck. Good work, Lily. Don't travel to the astral plane. <laughs> um, well, that, that would be very generous. The only thing, though, is I think we were thinking that it would have to be uh, Twizzard that wears it because he is the one, to our knowledge, he's the one being scried on. Ah. I see. Well, now, um, I, certainly, if we defeated Falrith, you could then have the amulet. I am a bit tapped out after the purchase of this tattoo. I could contribute fifty, maybe a hundred gold to the cause. I don't know, Blas, Wizard. What am I going to wear too? We... Does, is it something that has to be attuned to? It does. It requires attunement. Now, scrying, I, is... when we asked um, Sky to scry, yeah. she just has the ability to scry and she knew him well. Mm -hmm. Right? So that's why she was able to scry. I don't think it has anything to do with whose blood. It does not. So that's just so, a thing. And I'm so... pretty certain that each one of us except for maybe Lily, has had to roll wisdom checks on numerous occasions. So it's not just one person. Mm. So. Mm. All right, so. It could be one person who pays for it is the person who gets to wear it. What if we all chip in? Only one person can attune to it, so. Can we get and they only have enough metal chain. currently for one. How do we get more metal? Can we just divide it up into smaller pieces? We have to search for it. Well, I guess we should get more metal and then have him make more. Which means we have to go to the west. Okay. So that means I'd have to be wearing two amulets if I were to wear it. I don't know how much more my. Neck What's the take. current amulet you're wearing? Well, he's I, not wearing it. Oh, it's right. in your pocket. So I'm just holding it, but then I've got. Or it's in your pouch. I also have my gold chains on. Yeah. But I guess I can always take that weight. You can <laughs> attach it to the gold chain. Yeah, that's true. There you just go. Add, it's just more bling. <laughs> Could you wear it as an earring? I mean, it's just an amulet. It doesn't have to go around your neck. I think my ears are pierced. Technically, it's an amulet of proof against detection and location. Hmm. It's a little something like that. Hmm. Damn. Is that an ear? Yeah, no, you All wouldn't right. put it in an ear. <laughs> Let's go. Big lobes. Uh, but yeah, no, as Nando uh, has sort of, uh, his, his, his followers have sort of set aside a cozy little uh, sort of guest um, nook. There are hammocks hung up. Um, they look very, very large hammocks uh, made of some soft fabric. 
Uh, there's some pillow, one, you know, a pillow for each hammock. Please, please stay the night with us. Uh, tomorrow we will um, craft your amulet and you would be able to leave perhaps by noon tomorrow. If we uh, if we can gather some more of this uh, metal, would you be able to make some more amulets for us? If you can bring us more of this metal, we would gladly make you more amulets, especially cool. if there was some metal for us to keep. Oh sure. You can keep the scraps. <laughs> um. Should we go mine you... for some metal? I have a feeling we're going to need some water breathing. You know, we're, we're doing all this so we can hide from Falworth, right? Let's just go yeah. find him and kill him. Yeah, that's a plan. Let, let's lay a trap. I don't know how, but get him to come to us. Well, we did that, and he froze all of us and took one of the ambulance. We weren't expecting that. And, uh, and that uh, English dude. That's true. Alistair. Alistair. Yeah. He took a dude. What? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he totally took that dude. It's like Oasis, they killed a man. <laughs> so let's not forget about that. Four went out for my homie Alistair. We don't know he's dead. He's definitely Oh, I'm sure he's fine. I'm sure he's being bored to death by Falrath. Or he's being charmed to death by uh, Falrath. Well, I'll still pour one out. Okay. Um Um, okay. Lily, yeah. do you have Agnes's ring with you? No, I do not have Agnes's ring. Okay. I just know what it looks like. Okay. Why would I? What's that? Was I, was I told by um, Swimmy or by the? Did the Kanku mention? Another place that might have that jewelry? Invisible jewelry? Nope. Nope. Oh, okay. So Lily would have no need to talk to these people about it. Alright, so you guys spend the night? Are you doing anything special? Uh... No, although I guess we should figure out if we're going to actually walk away with this one amulet and if so how we're we going to pay for it i mean one amulet's better than no amulets i sort of feel that way it's one fifth of the way there that's true yeah. and then we know how to make it if we can like re-engineer you want to reverse engineer this amulet i mean you know it's an option it's, not it's, a an, option. it's an option <laughs> <laughs> just throwing out ideas Okay. How much gold is it? Five hundred. And that probably is the cost of the spell, the metal, and the craftsmanship together. Mm -hmm. So if we came in with the metal, it would probably cut the price down significantly. Well, if we come in with a, enough metal, we can probably just use the extra metal to pay for the amulets. Right. Well, has the scrying hurt us so far, except for that one time? Yeah, he found us. But, but, so we don't exactly know how he found us. He scried us. Right, but we but don't he's, know. But he's probably scried us before. We just happened to be in an area that he could get to. We don't know who specifically he scried, or if he scried our whole group somehow, or even Nate or Jenkins. Well... It has to be someone he knows well. It could have been Alistair. I mean, it was Twizzard that had to do the wizarding, the saving throws though, right? He wasn't the only one. You had right. to do it in, um, at the university in... Um, I, I mean though, I, I mean though at that, uh, shortly before he showed up, Right. It was Twizzard. Right, but Twizzard's not the only person that's being scried on. Yeah, that's why we need him for everybody. 
but we still want to do something to prevent the scrying, I think. Right. Okay. I was just wondering if it was worth the trouble since... I mean, I, I don't know what the alternative would be. If he can't scry one of us, he'll just scry the other. Yeah. Yeah, but we need a way for him to stop being able to find us so easily because that's putting us at a big disadvantage. Well, we don't even know where... We don't know anything about where he is. Yeah, we're, we're at a pretty big des disadvantage already. Well, yeah. you have a compass that points to him. <laughs> oh, yeah. It vaguely points to him. <laughs> but oh, yes, it, it points does. exactly to him. Yeah, but we don't know how far. By the way, That's I look true. at the compass. What's that? I look at the compass. Uh, it points... It points north... Northeast. Okay. He's behind us. What? Well, we're we're south on those islands. He's on the mainland, so that would be north. And then he's still a little east of us. The so islands are south of the mainland. Yeah. So you guys are right here. All right. Yeah. So. He's probably somewhere in North Swabia. Or the area. Above that. Beyond the water. Wait, is that near Puppy Town? Oh no. <laughs> He's been puppy in Puppy Town, Town all along. No. We had him. Uh, oh. No, it is not. Pu puppy Town would be uh, north northwest. Okay. Puppies are safe. Puppies are safe. Cool. Safe as they can Ooh. be. Having been slaughtered by the beetles. No, just kidding. Yeah. Puppy didn't. Oh, and, the puppies would overtake the beetles. And uh, where on the map is that place where we'd have to get more metal? To the west. It's not marked on the map? It is not marked on this map. All right. Wait a second. If it's to the west, yep. isn't the island that we need to get to to get the other amulet, is that also not to the west? Yep. Oh, it is, isn't it? So maybe we go get the other amulet and Spargo metal and then get ourselves in the best possible position to take down Falrith. Ooh, is that two birds with one stone? Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we pick up Agnes along the way. And Lily? We were yeah. having How's that gonna work? Why? Well, we can go back to being an NPC. Characters. Is that? Uh, I could pick up my, my sister, Sister Twizzard. Sister Twizzard. Sister Twizzard. Sister Twizzard. Sis, sis twizzard. <laughs> well, I mean, something we could sleep on, but it sounds like that might be. I think that's the thing not to too shabby a plan. All right, so you guys sort of have this conversation after you're sort of alone in this corner. And th this is a fairly great hall. Um, and, you know, you guys have a nice little cozy area off to one side. Um, the weather is very pleasant. Um, uh, few, few insects, but not too many uh, in this exact area. And, uh, and you fall asleep uh, listening to the the gentle splash of the not too distant waves and um, lulled to sleep. And that night, um, Pelias, you dream of uh, Mistra's symbol uh, glowing in front of you um, and you feel it, um, you feel it asking you, um, You feel it asking you if your path is still clear. Um, it's sort of, it's sort of, it's sort of questioning you. Um, Mister is questioning me. Yeah, Mister is questioning you. Uh, and does she want me to respond? You kind of get that feeling. Again, it's a dream, so you're not exactly sure what you're able or capable of doing. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, my past has been a little diverted, I guess. Um, you see, um, the, uh, the, the, the vision of, uh, of Mr. Bones's femur, um, sort of appear in front of you. Um, and you, you so get, she, you get the sort of questioning feeling again. So she wants to chat. Okay. I'll, I'll femur you up tomorrow. All right. Um, Twizzard, you, uh, you get a vision of your aunt. Is it your aunt? That, yes. You get a vision of your aunt um, teaching you uh, the very first spell that let you light something on fire. Um, and she... Uh, she sort of looks at you quizzically in this dream. Um, and you wave to her. And she smiles and nods. Um, and uh, Finric, you dream of one of your masters at the monastery. Um, and you sort of finish uh, an exercise. Uh, going through the motions that you've learned uh, so well that they're now muscle memory. And he sort of turns to you and sort of cocks his head and looks at you with a questioning look. <laughs> and that's it then. All right. And I'm guessing Finistel has a dream that we don't know about. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> she sure does. <laughs> All right. All right. You guys wake refreshed. Um, there's some uh, really fresh uh, fruits to be had for breakfast. Um, more of the uh, sort of cool citrusy water um, as Mondo joins you. Uh, sort of wearing another colored, uh, different colored flowing robe around him. And he's like, I trust you slept well. Mm -hmm. Amazingly well. Excellent. Very vivid dreams of my past and possibly future. Interesting. Well, our craftsmen will have the amulet you desire ready um, by the noon hour. I hope that will suffice. That works for me. Mm -hmm. Well, feel free to uh, explore, explore the jungle surrounding our, our village. Cool. Hey guys, uh, who wants the amulet? I mean, I'll take it if nobody else wants it. Uh, I guess, let me rephrase, who's buying the amulet? <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I I buy it if nobody else can buy it. Uh, I cannot buy it. I'd have to. I, go to I, I could buy it. I, I'd be pretty poor afterwards, but I could do it. Mr. Twizzard, you technically could. You have six hundred. Mm, not really. Do you think that there's anyone here that has a uh, uh, work that needs to be done? I guess a good old manual labor. Go are are you asking as none of that? I don't know. I'm just kind of kicking around in my head. I wonder if there's like a square of cardboard out front. <laughs> <laughs> you can always conjure one. <laughs> are there crowds out? Is, is there a marketplace? No. You, you've maybe seen a dozen people total. Yeah. Man. It's a very Got small a village. All right. Well, uh, I guess I'll buy it. Uh, I mean, I can chip in. Are we going to share it? Finish Dell's willing to chip in a sure. hundred, she said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we can okay. share it. We can well, all have a different All thing. right, so maybe like, you know, somebody wires it on like DePaul and call and then... 
Other people wear it on like the jaw and the mall. And no, you have to attune to, to, to it. It's going to be like a chunk of our morning every morning. Yeah, I mean, um, it would take an hour. You could do an hour every morning. Yeah, it only takes an hour. How long does it take us to eat breakfast in the morning? Assuming you also have a slot for you to attune to. I don't know how many magic items you've accrued, but you only have three slots to attune to. Oh. But not all magic items require attunement, right? Totally true. Wait, we, we attune to our setting stones, though, right? Yes. yes. Oh. So you're all you're all down a slot, assuming you're using. Um, and then I think Fenric is attuned to his parapet of closure, wound closure. Parapet of wound closure. Oh. Oh, I don't even have mine marked off here. Yeah. But, but oh. our own amulets are not ones that require attunement. No, they do not. Oh. They have other downsides. No. <laughs> yeah. Um. So I think Lily is going to maybe ask um as Nando. Uh, about maybe making her little rose um, glass into a little piece of jewelry that she could wear. Oh, yes, I think we could fashion a setting for it. Are you looking for a, a necklace or a bracelet or perhaps a headband or a tiara? Oh, well, huh. Maybe a bracelet, so when I do my knife work, it'll be like flashy. And she takes out her dagger and she like does like a little twirl around her like hand fingers kind of thing. I would uh, I would simply ask a donation of a uh, few gold. <coughs> um. Well, so like, will this be like made out of like silver or something at least, or? Gold? What would you prefer it to be made of? Um, maybe they could match these these silver earrings I got over on uh, on tunnel. That could absolutely Santa. happen. Our craftsmen are very skilled at what they do. Do you happen to have any like magical jewelry other than the amulet that you're making, my friends? We have made magical jewelry in the past rings and necklaces and bracelets that do all sorts of wonderful things but again usually some of this metal is used in that creation oh so like what about a ring that makes your finger disappear that sounds like perhaps an item that is not working as it was designed to is it supposed to have, like, a set? No, it would... I've never heard of such an item. Certainly one could be made. Rings of that nature that we have made in the past have turned the entire body invisible. Oh, so it's like a dud? <laughs> Perhaps it is... damaged oh. in some manner. Maybe we put the ring on backwards. It's not meant for your finger. <laughs> It just it's, it's just the middle <laughs> finger floating. Well, now it disappears. <laughs> um, no, it sounds more like a damaged item that could be fixed. Smack it. Could be fixed. Hit it. Pop it. Well, I personally don't have this this piece of jewelry. A friend of mine does, but would you be able to fix it? Having never seen it. But knowing the skill of our craftspeople, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Do you want to come with us on our journey? For uh, water no, blow my, metal. My place is here with my people. We've already packed your stuff. I did it during breakfast. <laughs> All right, so I think uh, Lily will go for uh, a silver bracelet that uh, accentuates the rose colored glass and I guess she'll she'll donate two gold for it all right it's it's uh it's it's welcomed and your bracelet will be ready at the same time as the amulet did you want to ask him about work about what about work work what, what am I asking about Sorry, I was not well, attention. Lily will say, hey, um, are there any things that 
we might be able to do to help you guys out while uh, we're waiting for this amulet. Maybe something that could go towards the amulet. Yes. Let's say my friend wanted to buy something, but my friend didn't have enough money. Is there something my friend can do to get more money? There is um, there is an entity on one of the smaller islands of Tulu that has been known to cause issues for my people. Oh, on it. Point away. I'll tell my friend. Um, do you have a chart of the islands? And he's sort of showing the map. And he, he points out this uh, this island right here. We do. Uh, do uh, what does this entity look like? How will we know them? Have you met a being from the airplane before. Like a pilot? <laughs> uh, Maybe it's a co-pilot. I don't think so. Wow. I think this would be the first. Flight attendant? I've met some stewardesses. <laughs> They're not called that anymore. <laughs> That's not what they said. They, um... There's one or more of them on the island, and they... give us issue, occasionally. You want us to take like, them out? Like a okay. We are primarily a peaceful people. Unless you contract. But it is... distressing. Wow. The issues they cause us, Periodically. In, in an ideal world, would we shake them up a bit, or like, when, in an ideal world, would they like, you know, not do, not be living anymore? I fear that these beings are not able to be reasoned with. You may try, though. Hmm. Okay. What do they look like? Um. They're... Like an element. <laughs> What's that? Is it like an air elemental? Yes. Yes. Are you familiar with them? I've heard of them. We're familiar with water elementals. Mm, that's true. Ah. Well. Yes. It is similar. Mm. Though less... Buttery? Uh, less drowny? Probably buttery. Less, um... Moist? willing to barter and communicate than water elementals. Huh. So ground to your elementals. Big grouchy gas bags. I don't think you guys had much luck bartering with the water elementals. <laughs> I don't know that we tried. I think we went right inside. I don't know. But, um, alright, well... Well, uh, what do you say, guys? Should we go uh, do Let's some? Do it. We don't stuff? have much choice. Yeah. Why yeah. not? Uh, we'll we'll tell our friend. All right. We'll, we'll bring its head back. Um, hey, bring back a a bag of air. <laughs> Hard to say. Um, cool. So do we grab our stuff and run down to the dinghy and hail our friends and go get this thing? Yeah, I think, I guess we need our boat to get over there, right? So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it would, judging by the map, it's another 50 miles out from where you are. So you yeah. would, it, it would take you, you know. 18 to 24 hours to get there, assuming you don't roll a double, double movement uh, on the D20. Um, so you, you would, you, you, it would probably be an overnight excursion. 
Um, so you could either wait around until noon for the amulet um, and head there, or you could go now and return uh, on your return voyage. Get the amulet. Mm. But I think you'll have a week to decide because we'll probably ah. call it there. Uh, thank you all for playing. Thank you for meeting as Nando. And uh, thank you for watching. And we'll see you next week for another episode of B&D Live.